Montreal, from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at www.wikipedia.org. Montreal, pronounced Montréal in French, is the second largest Canadian city, with a population of 1,812,800 people. It is the largest city and primary economic engine of the province of Quebec, of which it constitutes an administrative region. 3,607,000 people live in the Montreal metropolitan area. Montreal is one of the largest French-speaking cities in the world and is also the largest city in the Americas where the majority of the population is francophone. Montreal has a substantial Anglophone minority and an increasing population of allophones, those whose first language is neither English nor French, including both ethnic communities with deep historical roots and substantial numbers of recent immigrants of whom a substantial number are integrated into the French-speaking community. Montreal is located in the southwest of Quebec, approximately 200 kilometers southwest of Quebec City, the provincial capital, and about 150 kilometers east of Ottawa, the federal capital. The city sits on the island of Montreal at the confluence of the St. Lawrence and Ottawa rivers. The island divides the St. Lawrence between the main channel and Rivière des Prairies. The city also includes a total of 74 nearby islands, such as Île des Sœurs, Île Bizarre, Île Sainte-Hélène, and Île Notre-Dame. The city is spread over an area of 482.84 square kilometers. History The area known today as Montreal had been inhabited by the Algonquin, Huron, and Iroquois for thousands of years before the arrival of the first Europeans. The first European to reach the area was Jacques Cartier in 1535. He reached the area after speaking to an Iroquois chief in present-day Quebec City, who told him of a shiny stone upstream from his village. Cartier listened to him and believed he was describing gold, which led him to the village of Hochelaga on the island of Montreal. The local Iroquois took him to the top of Mount Royal, and Cartier planted the first of the mountaintop's famous crosses in honor of Francis I, his sponsor. Unfortunately for Cartier, the shiny stone turned out to be quartz, or perhaps pyrite or fool's gold, not gold. Seventy years after Cartier, Samuel de Champlain went to Hochelaga, but the village no longer existed. He decided to establish a fur trading post at Port Royal on the island of Montreal, but the local Iroquois successfully defended their land. It was not until 1639 that a permanent settlement was created on the island of Montreal, financed by a French tax collector named Jérôme Le Royer de la Dauversière. Under the authority of the Roman Catholic Société Notre-Dame, Paul Chaumet de Maisonneuve, Jeanne Mance, and a few French colonists set up a mission called Ville-Marie as part of a project to create a colony dedicated to the Virgin Mary. In November of 1653, another 140 individuals arrived to enlarge the settlement that eventually became known as Montreal. Ville-Marie became a center for the fur trade, and the Iroquois resumed their attacks on the settlement. Despite the continuous attacks, Ville-Marie prospered as a center for the Catholic religion and the fur trade as well as a base for further exploration into New France, until a peace treaty was signed in 1701 between the Iroquois and the French. A few buildings from this era remain in the area known today as Vieux-Montréal and in a few places around the island. The Treaty of Paris in 1763 ended the French and Indian War, and France chose to keep Guadeloupe instead of its Quebec colony. Now a British colony, and with immigration no longer limited to members of the Roman Catholic religion, the city began to grow from British immigration. In 1775, American revolutionists briefly held the city, but soon left when it became apparent that they could not take and hold Canada. More and more English-speaking merchants continued to arrive in what had by then become known as Montreal, and soon the main language of commerce in the city was English. The golden era of fur trading began in the city with the advent of the locally owned Northwest Company, the main rival to the primarily British Hudson's Bay Company. From the early part of the 18th century, the Scots-Quebecer immigrants who chose to make Montreal their home played a key role in the city's cultural, scientific, and business life. Although at their peak, the Scots made up only a small percentage of Montreal's population, they had an impact on the city far beyond their numbers. Scots were instrumental in building the Lachine Canal that turned the city of 16,000 inhabitants into one of the most important and prosperous ports in North America. It was also Scots who constructed Montreal's first bridge across the St. Lawrence River, and who founded many of the city's great industries, including Morgan's, the first department store in Canada, incorporated with Hudson's Bay Company in the 1970s, the Bank of Montreal, Redpath Sugar, and both of Canada's national railroads. 
The city boomed as railways were built to New England, Toronto, and the West, and factories were established along the Lachine Canal. Many buildings from this time period are concentrated in the area known today as Vieux Montréal. Noted for their philanthropic work, Scots established and funded numerous Montreal institutions such as McGill University, the Literary and Historical Society of Quebec, and the Royal Victoria Hospital. Montreal was the capital of the United Province of Canada from 1844 to 1849, bringing even more English-speaking immigrants, late Loyalists, Irish, Scottish, and English. The now large and wealthy Anglophone community built one of Canada's first universities, McGill, and built large mansions at the foot of Mount Royal. The economic boom also attracted thousands of immigrants from Italy, Russia, Eastern Europe, and other parts of French Canada. By 1860, Montreal was the largest city in British North America and the undisputed economic and cultural center of Canada. Montrealers volunteered to serve in the army to defend Canada during World War I, but most French Montrealers opposed mandatory conscription. After the war, the Prohibition movement in the United States turned Montreal into a haven for Americans looking for alcohol. Americans would go to Montreal for drinking, gambling, and prostitution, which earned the city the nickname Sin City. Despite the increase in tourism, unemployment remained high in the city and was exacerbated by the 1929 stock market crash and the Great Depression. However, Canada began to exit the Great Depression in the mid-1930s, and real estate developers began to build skyscrapers, changing Montreal's skyline. The Sun Life Building, built in 1931, was for a time the tallest building in the Commonwealth. During World War II, its vaults were the secret hiding place of the gold bullion of the Bank of England and of the British Crown Jewels. Canada could not escape World War I. Mayor Camillien Oud protested against conscription. He urged Montrealers to ignore the federal government's registry of all men and women because he believed it would lead to conscription. Ottawa was furious over Oud's insubordination and put him in a prison camp until 1944 when the government was forced to institute conscription. After the population of Montreal surpassed one million in the early 1950s, Mayor Jean Drapeau laid down great plans for the future development of the city. In 1958, he started development projects that had provisions for a new metro system and an underground city, the expansion of Montreal's harbor, and the opening of the St. Lawrence Seaway. New buildings were built on top of old ones in this time period, including Montreal's two tallest skyscrapers up to then, the 43-story Place Ville-Marie and the 47-story Tour de la Bourse. Two new museums were also built, and finally in 1966, the metro opened along with several new expressways in time for Expo 67, which was held in Montreal and was anticipated to attract 50 million visitors. A new Major League Baseball team, called the Montreal Expos, was named after the Expo and started playing in Montreal in 1969. The team moved to Washington, D.C. in 2005. The Summer Olympics were held in Montreal in 1976. Except for a few years during the 1960s, Drapeau was mayor uh, until the mid-1980s and brought Montreal into a new era even as Toronto overtook it as the economic center of Canada. Montreal celebrated its 350th anniversary in 1992, prompting the construction of two of the city's tallest skyscrapers, Mille de la Gauchetière and 1250 René Lévesque. Currently, Montreal's favorable economic conditions allow further improvements in infrastructure with the expansion of the metro system and the development of a ring road around the island. Neighborhood gentrification is also occurring. City Government the head of the city government in Montreal is the mayor, who is first among equals in the city council. The current mayor is Gérald Tremblay, who is a member of the Montreal Island Citizens' Union. The city council is a democratically elected institution and is the primary decision-making authority in the city. It consists of 73 members from all boroughs of the city. The council has jurisdiction over many matters including public security, agreements with governments, subsidy programs, the environment, urban planning, and three-year capital expenditure programs. The council is also required to supervise, standardize, or approve certain decisions made by the borough councils. Reporting directly to the city council, the executive committee exercises the decision-making powers appropriate to it and is responsible for preparing various documents, including budgets and bylaws, submitted to the city council for approval. The decision-making powers of the executive committee cover, in particular, the awarding of contracts or grants, the management of human and financial resources, supplies, and buildings. It may be assigned further powers by the City Council. Standing committees are the Council's instruments for public consultation. 
They are responsible for the public study of pending matters and for making the appropriate recommendations to the Council. They also review the annual budget forecasts for departments under their jurisdiction. A public notice of meetings is published in both French and English daily newspapers at least seven days before each meeting. All meetings include a public question period. The current standing committees have a two-year term. There are seven standing committees. In addition, the City Council may decide to create special committees at any time. Each standing committee is made up of seven to nine members, including a chairperson and a vice chairperson. The members are all elected municipal officers, with the exception of a representative of the Government of Quebec on the Public Security Committee. Climate Thanks to competing climatic influences, the climate in Montreal varies greatly, both by season and from day to day, and is considered a character of the city by Montrealers. Precipitation is abundant, with an average snowfall of 2.4 meters per year in the winter and regular rainfall throughout the year. Each year the city government spends more than $50 million on snow removal. Frequent thunderstorms make summer the wettest season statistically, but it is also the sunniest. The coldest month is January, with a daily average of minus 10.4 degrees Celsius. Due to wind chill, the perceived temperature can be much lower than the actual temperature, and wind chill temperatures are often included in weather forecasts. The warmest month is July, with a daily average of 20.9 degrees Celsius. The lowest temperature ever recorded was minus 37.8 degrees Celsius in January 1957, and the highest temperature was 37.6 degrees Celsius in August of 1975. Moderate to high humidity is common in the summer. In spring and autumn, temperatures and precipitation amounts average between 55 to 94 millimeters a month. Some snow in spring and autumn is normal. Similarly, early heat waves as well as Indian summer are a regular feature of the climate. The Montreal region's widely varying climate supports a diverse array of plants and wildlife. The maple is one of the most common trees, and the sugar maple, in particular, is an enduring symbol of Montreal and Quebec, thanks to the production of maple syrup. Demographics The Greater Montreal area has a population of 3,607,000 people, including the neighboring major cities of Laval and Longueuil, among other smaller communities. Montreal proper will be home to about 1.6 million people after the demerger referendum of June 2004, which comes into effect on January 1, 2006. A resident of Montreal is known as a Montrealer in English and a Montréalais in French. Residents sometimes refer to the city by the shorthand initial MTL. Most Montrealers speak French as their first language, a sizable minority speak English, and a majority of residents have at least a working knowledge of both languages. This trend has increased after the French language reforms of the 1970s. About 67.8% of the population of the Greater Montreal area are francophone. 18.4% are allophone, having neither French nor English as their first language, and 13.8% are native anglophone. Allophones and anglophones are most highly represented on the island of Montreal, where they make up 27.7% and 18.8% of the total population, respectively. A majority of allophones speak French or English as a second language. A May 2004 survey noted that 53% of the people in Montreal speak both English and French, while 37% speak only French and 7% speak only English. While the official language of Montreal is French, services are also commonly offered in English in downtown and tourist areas, as well as in areas designated as bilingual boroughs. The city has well-established Irish, Italian, Jewish, Greek, Arab, Asian, Hispanic, Haitian, and Portuguese communities along with smaller communities of people from almost every nation in the world. The Irish have been settling in Montreal in the province of Quebec for centuries, as they saw it as a more inviting place than many other parts of the British Empire. The Irish and French shared a common religion, Roman Catholicism. This made it easier for the Irish to be accepted and not discriminated against, as they were in Toronto, then called York. A large number arrived during the Great Famine of 1845 to 1852 in Ireland, which resulted in many orphans being adopted by French families. The tide of immigration continued for many years, and by some estimates, it is believed that nearly 40% of francophones have a mixture of French and Irish heritage. Each of the many neighborhoods in the city has a predominant language. The parts of the city that lie to the west of Boulevard Saint-Laurent can be said to be predominantly anglophone, while the neighborhoods to the east are predominantly francophone. Speakers of both languages are found in all parts of the city. Westmount, on the southwestern slopes of Mount Royal, is traditionally home to wealthy Anglophones, while Outremont, on the opposite side, is the home of wealthy Francophones. 
Montreal is the home or former home of multiple famous people, including two prime ministers, many well-known artists and musicians, and a number of politicians. Economy Once the largest city in Canada, Montreal remains a vibrant major center of commerce, industry, culture, finance, and world affairs. Montreal is a major port city, being at the start of the St. Lawrence Seaway, a deep draft inland waterway which links it to the industrial centers of the Great Lakes. As one of the most important ports in Canada, it is a transshipment point for grain, sugar, petroleum products, machinery, and consumer goods. For this reason, it is part of the railway backbone of Canada and has always been an extremely important rail city. It is the eastern terminus of the Canadian Pacific Railway and home to the headquarters of the Canadian National Railway. Montreal industries include pharmaceuticals, high technology, textile and clothing manufacturing, electronic goods, transportation devices, printed goods, fabric, and tobacco. Montreal is one of the world's top aerospace industry centers. It is often said that Montreal is the only city in the world where an entire airplane can be built from the start of the engine crafting to the last paint drop. The leading wagon of the industry is unquestionably Bombardier, which is one of the three most important aerospace companies in the world, alongside Boeing and Airbus. The headquarters of the Canadian Space Agency are located in Longueuil, southeast of Montreal. Montreal also hosts the headquarters of the International Civil Aviation Organization, or ICAO, a United Nations body, and the International Air Transport Association, as well as some 60 other international organizations in various fields. Places in Montreal Downtown Montreal, the Centre-Ville, is at the foot of Mount Royal, whose expanse forms a major urban park. Downtown contains dozens of notable skyscrapers, including mille la gauche -Etière, 1250 René Lévesque, and Yeo Ming Pei's Place Ville-Marie. This cruciform office tower, built in 1962, sits atop an underground shopping mall which forms the nexus of Montreal's underground city, one of the world's largest, with indoor access to over 1,600 shops, restaurants, offices, and businesses, as well as metro stations, transportation termini, and tunnels extending all over downtown. Southeast of Montreal is Old Montreal, Vieux Montréal, a historic center with such attractions as the Old Port, Place Jacques Cartier, City Hall, Place d'Armes, Pointe à Calière Museum, and the Notre Dame de Montréal Basilica. Montreal was host to one of the most successful World's Fairs in history, Expo 67. Partially based upon the success of the World's Fair, Montreal was awarded the 1976 Summer Olympics. The Olympic Stadium has the world's tallest inclined tower and, until the end of 2004 season, was the home of the Montreal Expos baseball team. Montreal is also home to the Montreal Canadiens, one of the first four original teams of the NHL. The Olympic complex also includes a modern ecology museum, an insectarium, and the Jardin Botanique de Montréal, one of the largest botanical gardens in the world, second only to Kew Gardens in England. Montreal is the center of Quebec culture and a major center of Canadian culture in general. It has many specialized museums, such as the Red Path Museum, the McCord Museum of Canadian History, and the Canadian Center for Architecture. The Place des Arts Cultural Complex houses the Museum of Contemporary Art and several theaters, and is the seat of the Montreal Opera and, for the moment, the Montreal Symphony Orchestra, which is scheduled to receive a new concert hall adjacent to Place des Arts. Nicknamed the City of Saints or La Ville aux Saint Clachés, Mon Montreal is renowned for its churches, causing Mark Twain to comment, this is the first time I was ever in a city where you couldn't throw a brick without breaking a church window. The city has four Roman Catholic basilicas, Marie-Graine du Monde Cathedral, Notre Dame Basilica, St. Patrick's Basilica, and St. Joseph's Oratory. This last is the largest church in Canada, with the largest dome of its kind in the world after that of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. Other well-known churches include the Pilgrimage Church of Notre Dame du Bon School, which is sometimes called the Sailor's Church, and the Anglican Christ Church Cathedral, which was completely excavated and suspended in mid-air during the construction of part of the underground city. All of these churches are major tourist destinations, particularly Notre Dame and the Oratory. Montreal has a small Chinatown, Cartier Chinois, just south of downtown, featuring Chinese shops and restaurants, as well as a number of Vietnamese establishments. Montreal is known as a queer-friendly city. Its pride festival, Diversité, is the second largest in North America after Toronto's. In 2002, organizers estimated it drew 1.4 million people. It benefits from financial support from all three levels of government. Montreal is home to one of the largest gay villages in North America, 
centered around the downtown Baudry metro station and known in French as Le Village Gay. Montreal is an epicenter of queer life and culture in Canada and hosts several circuit parties every year, as well as the Image Nation Gay and Lesbian Film Festival. The 2006 World Out Games are to be held in Montreal. Every Sunday in the summer, hundreds of people gather at the foot of Mount Royal for several hours of synchronized drumming, dancing, and juggling, amongst many other activities, in an event that has come to be known as the Tam Tams. It is unclear how this event started, but as it has no formal organization and has carried on for many years, there is no indication that it will end soon. Sports. Montreal is known for its hockey fans. Hockey's storied history began here. Montreal is the site of the Canadian Grand Prix, a Formula One auto race, held annually at the Circuit Gilles Villeneuve on Ile Notre Dame. Montreal also hosts the Molson Indy Montreal of the Champ Cars series. Both events allow the city to host festivities celebrating the racing industry. The F1 festivities begin on Rue Crescent, the week leading up to the race. Molson Indy festivities begin three days prior to the race and are held in the Latin Quarter around Rue Saint-Denis. On July 13, 1982, Montreal hosted the first baseball all-star game outside the United States. Montreal's current professional franchises are the Montreal Canadiens of the NHL, the Montreal Alouettes of the Canadian Football League, and the Montreal Impact of the United Soccer Leagues. Past professional franchises are the Montreal Expos Baseball, the Montreal Express La Crosse, and the Montreal Maroons, Wanderers, and Shamrocks, predecessors of the Montreal Canadiens as hockey teams. Transportation. Montreal is a transportation hub for Eastern Canada, with well-developed air, road, rail, and marine links to the rest of Canada as well as the United States and Europe. Mass Transit. The Montreal Metro was inaugurated in 1966 in time for the Expo 67's World Fair held in the following year. Montreal is also served by a commuter rail system, which is managed and operated by the Agence Métropolitaine de Transport. Airports. Montreal has two international airports, although one is currently open for passenger flights. Montreal Pierre Elliott Trudeau International Airport, formerly Dorval Airport, in the borough of Dorval, Lille d'Orval, serves all commercial passenger traffic. To the north of the city is Montreal Mirabel International Airport in Mirabel, which was envisioned as Montreal's primary airport, but which now only serves cargo flights. Roads. Montreal has a problem with vehicular traffic especially from off-island suburbs such as Laval on Ile Jésus and especially Longueuil on the south shore. The width of the St. Lawrence River has made the construction of fixed links to the south shore expensive and difficult. Accordingly, there are only four road bridges plus one road tunnel, two railway bridges, and a metro line, whereas the Rivière des Prairies is spanned by eight road bridges, six to Laval and two to the north shore. Since Montreal is on an island, the directions used in the city plan do not precisely correspond with compass directions, as they are oriented to the geography of the island. North and south are defined on an axis roughly perpendicular to the St. Lawrence River and the Rivière des Prairies. North is toward Rivière des Prairies, and south is towards the St. Lawrence. East and west directions are defined as roughly parallel to the St. Lawrence River, which flows southwest to northeast, and the Rivière des Prairies. East is downstream, and west is upstream. Boulevard Saint-Laurent divides Montreal into east and west sectors. Streets that lie on both sides of Boulevard Saint-Laurent are divided into two parts, which have east, est, or west, west, appended to their names. Streets that lie on only one side of Boulevard Saint-Laurent do not generally contain a direction in their names. Addresses begin at 1 on Boulevard Saint-Laurent. East of it, numbers increase to the east, while to the west of it, numbers increase to the west. On North-South Street, House numbers begin at the St. Lawrence River and increase to the north. Odd numbers are on the east or north sides of the street, even west or south. Numbered streets generally run north and south, and the street numbers increase to the east. The municipalities annexed to Montreal in 2002 do not follow this system, except for Verdun and Montréal-Nord. According to the rules of the Commission de Toponymie du Québec, the French language form of street names is the only official one, and is to be used in any language. For example, Chemin de la Côte des Neiges, Rue Sainte-Catherine, Côte du Beaver Hall. Many English speakers, however, use English generics such as street or road, as do English language media such as the Montreal Gazette. Officially bilingual boroughs have the right to use such names in official contexts, such as on street signs. In the past, a number of streets had both English and French names, such as Avenue des Pins or Pine Avenue, 
Rue Saint-Jacques or St. James Street, Rue de la Montagne or Mountain Street. Some of these names are still in common colloquial use in English. There are many streets whose French names incorporate an English specific, such as Chemin Queen Mary, Rue University, Avenue McGill College. There are also a few cases where two names are official, such as Chemin du Bord du Lac, Chemin Lakeshore. Education Montreal has one of the highest per capita populations of post-secondary students of any large city in North America, due to its four urban universities, McGill University, Université de Montréal, including the École Polytechnique de Montréal and the École des Hautes Études Commerciales de Montréal, Concordia University, and branches of the Université du Québec, the Université du Québec à Montréal, or UCAM, the École de Technologie Supérieure, and the École Nationale d'Administration Publique. Neighboring Longueuil, on the south shore of Montreal, across the St. Lawrence, is home to the Université de Sherbrooke à Longueuil. Communications and Media Montreal has a large and well-developed communications system, including several English and French language television stations, radio stations, and magazines. Newspapers include the English language Montreal Gazette and the French language La Presse, Le Journal de Montréal, and Le Devoir. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation License, available at www.gnu.org slash copyleft slash fdl.html.